Hallelujah. Oh, let's give the Lord a shout. Let's give the Lord a praise. He's worthy of all praise. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. When we praise, he comes down. Hallelujah. You know, this morning, I was telling Pastor Angel, I had the hardest time getting here. I hit every light. The freeway was blocked off. I mean, devil, you're a liar, <laughs> you know. You're not going to stop me. And, and my wife knows me is that I don't speed up on yellow. I slow down. <laughs> so it just took me a little longer. But praise God, I'm here. I'm rejoicing. God has prepared a place for his people to be refreshed. In Ezekiel 47, verse 3, he's talking to Ezekiel. And he says, I, he walked to the east with a measuring tape and measured off 1,500 feet, or, or 1,000 cubic, leading me through the water that was ankle deep. Say ankle deep. Verse 4, he measured off another 1,500 feet, leading me through the waters that was knee deep. Say knee deep. Come on, I need your response. Come on, let's. That's right. He measured off another 1,500 feet, leading me through the water, waist deep. Say waist deep. In verse 5, it says, he measured off another 1,500 feet. By now, the river was over my head. Say over my head. Water to swim in it. Water that no one could possibly walk through. And as I was preparing this, Pastor Angel asked me to open up. I started preparing. And you know, God wants us not to be ankle deep in his presence. You know, some of us have got too comfortable ankle deep, you know. And then some of us are coming like knee deep, you know. And some of us are waist deep. And you're happy there. You're comfortable. But how many know that God doesn't let us be comfortable all the time? Once we get comfortable, he shakes it up. Amen. And so then he's, Ezekiel said, then it was the water was so high, he was submerged in it. The Bible says, in his presence is fullness of joy. You know, we don't have enough joy as Christians. I mean, I understand the world. You know, they, they're watching the news and inflation and all this other stuff. And they don't have no joy, but we have, we go through the same thing, right? There's inflation with them and with the believers. But the difference is we have the joy of the Lord. We got ha we have God's promises. Second Corinthians 1 20 says, His promises are yes and amen. You know what amen says? Means it means so be it. So when we say, when Jesus says something, God says something, and we say amen, we're saying, so be it. Amen. And as we open up this morning and welcome those that are on Facebook, are we on Facebook? We welcome you. Let's give the Lord a hand for those that are on Facebook. We understand maybe you couldn't make it this week, but we believe you'll make it next week. Praise God. But I tell you, the presence of God, the Bible is wherever two or three are gathered in his name. He's in our midst. He walks through the aisles. My wife was saying the other day that uh, her and a couple other people saw the Holy Spirit of fresh fire coming upon this place. I tell you, we're in a place, a good place where God has us. Amen. It's just not a new place, but it's the right place that God has for this church for what God's going to do with all of us. Amen. So as I open up the prayer, you know what? I was going to start from the back and go, okay, I'm ankle deep. Then I'm knee deep and coming up and coming up. This altar, this place, is where you get submerged in the presence of the Lord. Acts 119 says, times of refreshing come from his presence. How many besides me after this morning's drive need a refreshing? <laughs> Amen. I say, Lord, refresh me because I don't feel, you know, I pray in the spirit and so forth. But I tell you, God is able as we go forward, God is able to refresh us. 
And God wants to do something this morning as Pastor Pete brings the word this morning. I tell you, I believe it's going to be life-changing for all of us. Amen. And the last thing before I open up in prayer, it's so good to see the youth in the second row. It's awesome. These youth are awesome, Pastor Angel. I love them, you know. Praise God. They challenge me when I'm teaching because I look at them. But praise God, I love them. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's lift up hands. Let's start singing that just as lightly, softly. Because there are about, there's a river. There's a river. And God is ordaining a river this morning that if you come and you jump in, you know that when you've gone to the beach and, and if you go ankle deep, knee deep, you're freezing. You're cold. You know, it takes a while. But what do you do? You just jump in, right, Pastor? You just jump in. So this morning, I invite you, Brother David, I invite you to jump in this morning. Hallelujah. Jump in the river. Hallelujah. Jump in the river. Don't wait for the music to start. Come right now. Come right now. Come and let's jump in the river. Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for a move of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you have your way. Lord, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is bringing a fresh fire this morning, that as we come up, Lord, there's a time of refreshing. We shall not grow weary in well-doing, but we shall go forth. And this morning we offer up. We may not feel like it, Lord, but we offer up the sacrifice of praise. We're not going to get tired. We're not tired of praising you. We're not tired of worshiping you because, Jesus, you deserve all the praise and all the glory. And everyone said... Amen. Hallelujah. Gozate. Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the 
stop this joy. No music. Nothing can stop. Come on, lift up your voice. Nothing can stop this joy in my soul. 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 Nothing can stop this joy. Hallelujah. Come on, worship your God. Worship your God. Ese gozo, ese gozo. Que nada te robe ese gozo. Ese gozo del Señor. Hallelujah.
want to see you open up the floodgates of the mighty river flowing from
He's doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. Come on, how many believe that? God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is healing he is gonna someone. Save. He is saving God someone. Is doing God is doing something right now. Right now. He is moving out. He is moving out. Making a way. Making a God way is doing something. God is doing something. Something for you, God is doing something for you. God is doing 
Come on, lift up your hands if you believe God is doing something right now in your life. Lift up your hands. something and the Lord says you've been seeking me out day and night and there's been a shaking in your life and you said Lord I need something you cried out and he's held your tears because of the shaking that was so strong that happened but the Lord says you came to the right place because it's your time says the Lord where the shaking has stopped, the enemy has stopped, for you are in the palm of God's hand and he shall not let you go, says the Lord. It's your time, it's your season, so get ready for joy is your portion. That section over there, that section right there with a brother with the blue, right there I tell you the Lord says he's working he's coming through and, for, and the Lord says know this I have not denied you delay is not denial says God for I'm coming to do a great work says the Lord know this grab a hold of my promises for I'm not a man that I would lie says God and know that I shall break through for I am the great Master of breakthrough says your God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. We could be here all morning, but you may return to your seats. Thank you. Someone shake someone's hand. Greet someone on your way back. You know, um, sometimes as ministers come up, we, we're, we're not sure how the spirit is going to flow, but that was a right on song, team. That was a right on song. Praise God. I'm so glad, Stephanie, that you guys just took it to another level. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand for this team. Fatic. Praise God. Amen. How many are glad they came to church this morning? Yeah. And in Facebook land, how many are happy and, set and joyful that you saw what God was doing this morning? Praise God. So we invite you to come and be here. If you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Corinthians 9-7. Oh, I shouldn't say if you have your Bibles. The pastor's always said, bring your Bibles. You know. Thank you, Jesus. I need three people to say amen when you find it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I used to do that too. You know, he, the pastor would give one of those Leviticus Bibles, you know, 
something like that. He goes, okay, say amen when you have it. Amen. <laughs> Still looking. Amen. I got it. You know, I'm glad he never called me up and said, can you read it? <laughs> I forgot my glasses. <laughs> it says this. You should each give then as you have decided, not with regret or out of a sense of duty, for God loves the one who gives gladly or cheerfully. You know, when, it, it, when, when we receive the tithes and offerings, we receive it unto the Lord, and it's to your account. The Bible says that he would open up the windows of heaven and pour a blessing that we would not be able to contain. Now, I know that in every, every society, I mean, every church, there's probably like, I, I don't believe in tithe. You know, I don't believe in tithing, and even though Jesus talked about that, I'm going to give you another scripture. Because guess what? The kingdom of God is not going through inflation, right? <laughs> He's not lacking, amen? That he has a, you know, cows on a thousand hills, you know, and I love steak and carne asada, so praise God. But it said, uh, good for you to turn there, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Because I just want to share that we should be cheerful when we give. When we bring in our tithe, it's an honor, it's a privilege to give to God what he's given to us. You know, I, you know that the IRS takes like 40% of our taxes, right? And, and just a side note, you know the one that won over a billion dollars, a billion and something dollars on the lotto? You know how much he got? They got 400 million. Now that's a lot of money, but compared to one point something billion and they're gone, see, God's not like that. God blesses us and provides for us. Amen. And, and some say, some, and I'll just add this, some think that, Oh, I don't have the money I've been giving. You're alive, aren't you? You got your joy. But the most important thing, your name is written in the last book of life. We have reservations in heaven. And Acts 2, 42 says, And they were continuing steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of the loaves and in prayer. Verse 43, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and miracles through the apostle. Miracles and wonders took place. We need to see miracles and wonders take place in the church. Amen? Is anyone going to ask me, but how? I'm glad you asked. And all the believers who were together had all things in common. Verse 45, the key. And they sold their possessions and goods and distributed distributed them to all according as everyone had need. You know, could you imagine a pastor angel said, okay, uh, today I need you to go home, have a family meeting, sell your home and bring us offerings in here. You know, we talk about 10%, but they gave, they sold their stuff so that there was no need within the church, so that signs and wonders could happen, so that this man that's sitting before me, both these men sitting before me, they can do what God's called them to do. They don't have to worry about the budget. They don't have to worry if it's a money coming in. Because why? Because the people at Turning Point Fellowship have a joyful heart to give joyfully. Amen. So you, as, as you have the opportunity, and I say opportunity this morning, to bring in your tithe, to bring in your offering, you know, that, and do it cheerfully. <laughs> Isaiah 119, I believe it is, says, if we be obedient and we, and, we, and we be willing and obedient, we also shall eat the fruit of the land. Don't come up here, oh, man, oh, hey, you want this? <laughs> That's obedient, but you're not willing. So come up here joyfully. In fact, I challenge anyone, I know people, you probably won't do it, but why don't you laugh? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Is there any takers? <laughs> Praise God. If you need an offering envelope, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, where are the kids? What's the number?
you know, you kids are going to be blessed. You are. Because, you know, when they, when they hear you, you're going all over the place. Their voice, you're already beginning to know how to minister. So if you need an offering envelope, just raise up your hand and the uh, ushers will bring you one. ask you to bless this tithing, Father, that you provide each and every need here at Turning Point Fellowship, Father. Father, we rejoice in being able to give, Father, for those that gave, Father, and those that had a heart to give, Father, that you would just make them good stewards of what it is that you give us each and every day, Lord. Father, we just thank you for the gathering of the fellowship, Father, and we come to honor you, Father, and we thank you most of all, Father, for the blessings to bestow on each and every one of us, Lord. Father, we just thank you and we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Praise God. You, you may be seated for a second. Praise God. Are there any first-time visitors here? Raise up your hand if they're first time. Okay, back there. Yeah! Back there, back there. Woo! The ushers, leave your, keep your hands lifted up so the ushers can give you a card. All right. Pastor Angel, it's getting full. All right, praise God. And, uh, and us that are, that, I mean, members, you may have to give up your seat for someone, okay? <laughs> your regular seat, okay? Except back there, of course. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to turn it over to Pastor Angel. You're going to introduce uh, the man of God that's coming up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome to Turning Point. Uh, we want to, we here at Turning Point Fellowship, we celebrate people. We, we don't tolerate people, we celebrate people. So we're about to celebrate one of our members here. Uh, it's her birthday today, so let's have Mia uh, come on up here. Come on, let's all stand up, man. If this was your child, you would, you would stand up. You would want her cheered on. Amen. How old are you? God, I am getting old. 17 years old. Wow, where did it, where's Marlene at? Oh, she, oh there she is. <laughs> All right, we're going to sing happy birthday on the count of three. Her name is Mia, M-I-A. So uh, let's all sing together and enjoy ourselves as we sing. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mia. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to go ahead and release our worship team. Let's give them a good round of applause. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Uh, the youth will be staying in today. The youth will be staying in, but our children the, from 12 down will go, or 13 down, will go ahead and uh, be released. So we're going to go ahead and release our children. Let's give them a good round of applause. Let's celebrate them, because if you don't celebrate them, somebody else will. But we're going to celebrate them in Jesus Christ. Don't forget to tell the teachers thank you after class. Tell the teachers thank you that they're teaching your children about Jesus. Amen. Your children are learning about the Lord and his ways. Uh, we don't teach religion here. We teach a freedom in the spirit. Amen. That we can live and we can live out loud for Jesus. Amen. I always write that on Facebook. Just live out loud for Jesus. Give Jesus a, give a shout. Come on. If he let you out, give him a shout, man. Amen. I want to introduce a, a good friend of mine, a childhood friend of mine, a, a uh, th this man is, uh, you're going to see his statue. His statue can't even be compared to his spiritual size. Uh, a great man of God, a man who loves the Lord, and he's been through some things uh, here and there, but uh, he's come out. He didn't get stuck. He kept coming, and uh, he's going to bless us today. So uh, let's welcome Pastor Pete Vargas. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maya, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many can say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Aren't you glad that he's in the saving business? Aren't you glad that he's still in the blessing business? 
Aren't you glad that he's still in the forgiving business? Aren't you glad that he's in your business and he's in my business? The Lord just kind of butts his head in wherever he wants and whenever he wants. And I'm glad about it. Amen. You know, uh, Pastor and Angel parents and my parents, they used to worship at the same church in South Whittier. Yeah. Iglesia de Dios in Whittier on Carmenita Avenue. And, you know, I used to go there every once in a while when I was a teenager and our parents... I don't know if they could ever dream that it would come to this. But, you know, because we were out in the streets. I mean, you know, he was, you know, one way. And there are many, there are many roads to the Lord. There's a drug road. There's an alcoholic road. There's a fornication road. There's wherever he brought you from, an adultery road. But there's only one door. And that door is Jesus. And it don't matter how he brought you. What matters is that you are here. And you're here, and we're celebrating him, and he's celebrating you. Because he loves you like that. And I feel his presence and his love everywhere I go, and especially in this place. But I don't think they could ever have imagined that. It would come to this, and I'm so glad that God gave me life to see it, to see it, and to tell about it. Amen? Amen. Let's go to our Bibles, and let's open up our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 5. The Rock of Horeb Christian Ministry sends greetings and salutations and they say, well, pastor, who's at your church? Well, I have an associate pastor who's taking care of business over there. You know, 1 Samuel chapter 17, when Jesse sent David to go and check after his older brothers, David had to leave and go take food to the commanders and his brothers. And he had sheep he had to watch over. But he didn't leave, he didn't leave the sheep alone. The Bible says that before he left, he left the sheep with the shepherd. Somebody he could trust. And then he went on and he handled his business. And I believe that God handles his business real good. Amen? Amen. John chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem... By the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, not important folk, impotent folk, a blind, halt withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool, and troubled the water, and whosoever, then first after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Whatsoever disease he had. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, and we give you glory and honor. Thank you for your blessing, Lord. Thank you for this awesome opportunity, Lord. I thank you for Pastor Angel, Father God, who opened up this pulpit, Father God. Bless his life, Father God. Bless his ministry like you have, Father God. Increase it, Father God, ten and even one hundredfold, Lord. I praise God, Father God, for all that you do, the power of the Holy Spirit to make the impossible possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You know, here in John chapter 5, and yesterday, you know, I taught them in, and, and we, we had a theme that was running through the, the, the teaching or the preaching or whatever it is that you want to call it. And we talked to the men of coming to church, and this goes for everyone, men, women, children, whoever you are, of coming to church with a plan and a purpose. 
Don't just show up just because mom tells you to come or dad tells you to come or your husband tells you to come. Don't just come and not expect to receive something. There should be an expectation that we are going to receive something from the Lord and the Lord is going to guide us to do something for him. We have to have a plan and a purpose. And we spoke yesterday about this there's this man who was blind, blind Bartimaeus, who had a plan and a purpose. He didn't have his sight, but what he did have was his mouth and his ears, and he used those to grab the attention of the Lord Jesus. And also what he did is he humbled himself, and he called out to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, meaning that Jesus was the Messiah and also his Lord. We spoke about Jesus being the Lord of all the Lord of the universe, but if he is not, if Jesus is not the Lord of your life, and if he's not the Lord of my life, then it doesn't make a difference because our life will not change. He's got to be the Lord of your life, and if you want to catch the Lord's attention, you call out to him, say, your Lord, you are Jesus. You are the Lord of my life, and you will catch his attention. See, Jesus you catch his attention by believing who he says he is and believing the things that he says he's going to do in your life. So we talked yesterday about a person that had a plan. Today we're going to talk about someone who had no plan. No plan at all. His plan for retirement was to buy a lotto ticket every Friday. It's not a plan. It's a wing and a prayer. No plan at all. Excuse me. So, this man was sick for 38 years. And in those 38 years, and I have notes, but I go here, there, and everywhere, and then I look at my notes and say, okay, I covered everything. <laughs> but this man, for 38 years, he did the same thing over. And over and over every day, hoping that one day he would be the first one to enter the pool and be healed. Didn't had no plan, none at all. He didn't even have the wherewithal to. I don't even know if he had a friend because I just said, "Hey, homeboy, can you just come with me today? And today, can you just like put me in the pool today?" I didn't even hear him say that. So Jesus, after a feast, came to the feast. And feast for the nation of Israel, they lasted a whole week. It was a week-long feast, you know, that, that they celebrated. You know, Jesus was a Jew through and through. He was circumcised on the eighth day. He was presented in the temple. He was bar mitzvah at 12 years old. Jesus wore a rabbi's robe, which came about to the ankles. And on every corner of the robe, he had tassels that were called tzitz. And those tassels would hang down, and those were the ones that scraped the floor. The robe would never touch the floor. And it is believed with the woman with the issue of the blood, when she touched the hem of her garment, she really touched one of those tassels and was healed. And the Bible says that this, 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 that in the Gospels, the word rabbi, according to Jesus, is mentioned 16 times. He was Jewish through and through. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17 tells me that Jesus said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but I have come to fulfill. Jesus was not going to destroy the law of Moses, but he was going to come in the personified uh, uh, body, and he was going to uphold these laws. Now, the pool of Bethesda, and the feast, there was seven feasts that the Jews attended. Now, if you're a male Jew, you had to attend three of them. There was three that you had to attend. It was the, 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 the feast of the Passover, you had to attend 
the Feast of Pentecost and the Feast of the Tabernacle. You have to attend those three feasts if you were a male Jew. You could attend all seven of them, but those were the three that you couldn't miss. And it was, they were thinking it was probably one of these feasts. The Bible doesn't mention which feast he went to, but it was probably one of these feasts that he was at. So Jesus goes walking by, and in verse 1, chapter 5, it says, After these, the Bible says that after these there was a feast of the Jews. It doesn't say which one. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And now there was at Jerusalem, there was a pool. And there was a pool at the five gates, and what they used this pool for is they used to wash the sheep and make sure they were clean uh, before they were sacrificed. You can't sacrifice a dirty sheep. You've got to wash it there. So they had this pool. And there was a belief there that whoever was the first one to enter it, once the angel troubled the water, would be healed. So this man stood there 38 years waiting. You know, some of us have no plan when we come to church. We're around 38 years, 28 years, 18 years, and our life doesn't change. Our circumstance doesn't change. We have the same infirmity we came in with 20 years ago. We have it now. And it doesn't change because our plan did not change. The definition of insanity is if you do the same thing over and over and over again and expect a different result, you're crazy. You're insane. If it's not working for you, you got to change it up. Someone say amen. Amen. If your life is not working for you, you got to change it up. And God has given us the power and the authority to do that. You were created in the image of God. We were created in the image and the likeness of God. He has the ability and the power to change things. So do you. Sometimes we sit there hoping. that things and circumstances are going to change. Now Jesus went down and he saw this man. Let's go to verse 5. And a certain man was there which was infirmity for 38 years when Jesus saw him lie there and knew that he had been now a long time. In this case, he said unto him, Will you be made whole? Jesus asks us that every day. He's asking you that right now. Whatever it is that is bothering you, do you want to be healed from it? Do you want to have me correct you? Do you want to to be straightened out? You know, I'm an investigator by trade. I was a police officer before. I was a detective and... I had a certain way of interviewing suspects. You ask them a question, and I never asked a question that I didn't know the answer to. So I did it with my kids. And I used to tell them, remember, anything I'm going to ask you, I already know the answer to it, so you better not lie. Sometimes I knew the answer, and sometimes I didn't. But they didn't know what answer I knew and didn't know what answer I didn't know. So they had to come with it. Someone say, come with it. It's like God. God asks you a question, and he knows exactly what's going on in your life. He just wants you to confess it. Confess your faults. He wants us to confess our sins. Because when we put it out there in the atmosphere, we realize how dumb we were to do what we did. Someone say amen. Amen. So Jesus asked this man, do you want to be made whole? Did you do the crime? I would ask somebody. If you didn't do it, what's your answer? No. You don't have to explain anything. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to... Even get an alibi. Did you do it? No. Prove it. Didn't do it. 
But the person that did it, well, you know, did you do it? Well, you know, I, 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 don't, I, I don't remember. I don't recall. Uh, maybe I was at my, my mom's house. Maybe I wasn't. Uh, they give you excuses. When Jesus asked this man, do you want to be made whole? What should have been his answer? Yes. All day long, yes. And that's the title of my message today. My title of my message, just say yes to Jesus. Just say yes. But in verse 7, you'll see he's like the rest of us. Making excuses why we can't come, why we can't do, why won't they appoint me, why won't they appoint, why won't they raise me, why won't they elevate me, don't they see I have all this talent, don't, why am I stuck cleaning bathrooms? Pastor of my church, I still clean the bathroom, someone say amen. One time we had a couple of churches over and. There was an older guy, poor guy. He had a diaper on. He went to the bathroom and he tried to flush the diaper. What do you think happened? Pastor! The toilet's overflowing. And it smells bad. They're all standing around. So I grabbed a plastic bag, put my hand in, and grabbed it, went in there, and... Uh, with the stuff in there, you know, all the floaters. Unstuck it, rolled it up, threw it away, pumped it a couple times, flushed it, cleaned it. Oh, how can you do that? Oh, that's nasty. That smells. Well, if I didn't do it right then and there, who was going to do it? Nobody. Nobody. Sometimes you got to get your hands a little bit dirty. Sometimes you got to mix it up. Someone say amen. I remember we were in the world. We were the first ones to volunteer. I'll go homie. I'll do that. I'll be. I wanted to show how tough we were. But now in church, who wants to go hand out these tracks? Well, not me. I was embarrassing. You went embarrassed when you were, I better leave that alone. We are out there messing around. <laughs> Verse 7, he answers Jesus. He says, the impotent man answered Jesus, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I'm coming, another man steps in before me, and, and, and you know what? Just can't make it. I'm not the first one to get into the pool. It's time to change your ways. It's time to change your plan. It's time the way you attack to change the way you attack things. If it's not working for you, guess what? It's never going to work for you. You got to change it up. And Jesus wasn't asking them how and why anyway. Do you want to be made whole? Simple question. Requires a simple answer. Yes. All day long, all night long, yes. I want to be made whole, yes. I want to be healed. You saw that in yesterday's teaching with blind Bartimaeus. Jesus asked him, what do you want? He goes, I want to see. He didn't sit there and say, well, you know, these guys don't treat me fair, and they have me in the back, and when they give me alms, they don't even give me a lot. They just give me a little bit, and I want to see. He had a plan. What is it that you want from God this morning? And more importantly, what is it that God wants from you this morning? What is it? Well, if you don't know, you better figure it out, and you better figure it out fast. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting in the same situation for 38 years. And it's not going to change. 
I've been in the gospel for 30 years. Well, you ain't been doing it right for 30 years, so it doesn't count. Experience doesn't count unless it's good experience. If you've been welding something for 30 years and you've been welding it the wrong way, those 30 years was a waste of time. It doesn't count. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's how I feel right now. Pobrecito, he's fine. He's just worshiping. So he, you know, he gives Jesus this excuse. And Jesus says, you know, let me cut through all this red tape. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. You know? And, you know, he was expecting to get healed on that day. And that day, you know, it was a feast. So there's usually a lot of people by this pool. So when the feast comes, everyone from everywhere comes to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast. So instead of there being maybe 300 people by the pool, now there's 3,000. His odds just got worse. But see, Jesus, in Matthew, excuse me, in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus announced his ministry, and he reads the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 and 2, it says, today is acceptable year of the Lord, and today me reading it and your hearing has, that prophecy has come true. It's, Anything that Jesus did before that, he wanted, people, he wanted people not to say anything about. He made the water into wine. He told his mom, why are you bothering me? It's not my time. When he healed somebody before that time, shh, keep it quiet. Don't tell nobody. <clears throat> I healed you because I love you, but keep it between me and you for now. Because I got plans. So it was this feast that Jesus was going to come out <clears throat> and he was going to start something. This was the day he was going to start something. Remember, this is a Sabbath day. He healed him on a Sabbath day. Jesus was there all week. So was this guy. He could have healed him on a Thursday. Could have healed him on a Wednesday. Could have healed him on a Sunday. Could have healed him on a Monday, but he picked Saturday. Because he wanted to start something. It was his time now. Be careful when Jesus wants to start something in your life. He's going to do it on the day that's most inconvenient. To you. And not to him, to you. I remember when I was a cop, I used to go through the warrant book. Oh, homeboy has a warrant. Cool. This and that. And I'd always use it as a hook, pull him over anytime. Because I knew he'd never take care of it. They don't pay their fines. I knew it. They ain't going to pay. They don't pay. And they pay it. They trade it for jail time. They don't pay money. They pay it in time. So I knew, you know, he'd always have a warrant. It was an excuse to pull him over. Hey, what do you got? Why are you pulling me over? You got a warrant. Can't deny it. He knew he had it. But if they mess with me, I waited till Friday night or Saturday night when they were driving with their hyena on a date. Oh, Mr. Gonzalez is on the boulevard. Let's see if he took care of that warning. He didn't take care of it. I know he didn't. And because you made me mad and you gave me some messed up information, it's, your bill is due. But man, I'm Officer Vargas, I'm on a date, please let me slide. I've let you slide several times and you've given me the information that I've, you haven't given me the information I've asked for, so that's what, homegirl's gonna go out with someone else tonight, but she ain't going out with you. And at the most inconvenient time, that's when they would get busted. God shows up at the most inconvenient time. But it's a good thing because he changes your life. 
And it's a good thing that Jesus showed up right then and there to change this man's life. But it's going to get worse before it gets better. Just like in your walk with the Lord. When you get saved, it gets worse before it gets better. Well, I thought I was good, Lord. I thought you saved me, God. What's going on? The bill is due. He wants you to clean up all your mess before we can move forward. Immediately the man was made whole. And the Bible makes it a point to say in verse 9, and it was the Sabbath. God knew that. Jesus knew that. He did it on purpose to start some stuff. Let's we'll see the stuff that he started. Verse 10. And the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, Hey, it's the Sabbath day. Not, they didn't say, Hey, you're walking now. How wonderful. Hey, you're cured now. How great. Not everybody is going to be happy when you get saved. Not everybody's going to be happy when God turns your life around. Not everybody is going to be happy when you don't hang out anymore by the pool. I'm going to be happy. Get used to it. More people are going to be sad than happy. Because they can't use you anymore. Oh, tell so-and-so to go get it. Tell so-and-so to go score. He'll do it. Tonto. Go ahead and go do the beer run. He always does it. He's fast. His car will start. You know, the Jews said, hey, who? Who healed you? Don't you know that it's unlawful? To carry your bed? See, God, you religious people will make something good into something bad. Legalistic people will turn your joy. Oh, you're jumping too high. You're, uh, you, you, you're dancing like the world. We can't have that in here. Even measure how high you jump. Something that God gave us, the legalists and the religious folk, turn it into something bad. God gave us a Sabbath day to rest from work and to give us a day to give him thanks. That's what we're doing here today. Yes. Giving him glory and honor for what he's given to us. Things that we couldn't give to ourselves. But after a while, the Pharisees, well, it's like today. Oh, God, I know I'm going to get in trouble. In this world of being politically correct, you can't even define what a woman is. Someone say amen. I don't know what a woman is. You show me one, I'll tell you whether it's one a woman or not. I mean, it's quite obvious. But the world is getting all confused, just like the Pharisees started questioning what is rest? What constitutes rest? When and where did the confusion come? Rest. Well, they decided after so many years, what is straining yourself? Well, they came to the conclusion to define it as if you lift two dried figs from the cup to put it in your mouth, you lift more than two, you're straining yourself. You mean if I go into the bowl and I grab three or four or five because I'm a, I get hungry, and I throw my I just strain myself in their law according to their law. Yes, so they perverted 
Something that God meant for good, they perverted it for evil. Something that they could execute you for. So he said, don't you know it's unlawful for you to pick up your, your mat? It wasn't, hey, I'm so happy for you that you're healed. I'm so happy for you that you're not an alcoholic anymore. I'm so happy for you that you're not a drug addict anymore. I'm so happy. Don't you know that the homies are mad because you don't hang out anymore? Don't you know they're upset because you said you'd never go back to her, and now you're back to her, and you betrayed the homies? And you saved your marriage? I said, don't you know it's unlawful? See, now he wishes he was still by the pool, kicking back. So now they're sweating him. And he like, man. And he answered to them, you know, I, I didn't mean to get in this trouble. Some dude just walked by and asked me if I wanted to be made whole. I, you know, after some explanation, he didn't listen to me. He, he healed me. They're sweating him. See, when God does something in your life, when he changes your life, you can no longer kick back with the homies. You can no longer lay down by the pool. You can no longer do what it is that you were supposed to do. So when Jesus asked him, do you want to be made whole? It was almost like Jesus saying, are you sure? Are you sure you want this? You have the calling of a pastor. Are you sure you want this? There are some days I don't know. God, someone just got in my face. I don't know. And I don't want to get worldly with nobody. I just, you know, I don't want to mess up my salvation. Now he's in trouble. Because who was it? He doesn't know. You don't know Jesus. You don't know. So he says, verse 12, Then they asked him, What man is it which did this unto thee, take, that said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? Who was it? See, they wanted their pound of flesh. They wanted it. And the guy that was healed said, You know what? I don't know who it was. For Jesus had, con, you know, had what conveyed himself away. He just psh, disappeared into the crowd, into the multitude. Jesus didn't hand the guy a business card. Dr. Jesus of Nazareth, by way of Bethlehem. You know who was? Then after Jesus comes back into the temple and here's a guy who once was lame, standing upright, thanking God and asking him to get me out of this situation. <laughs> Lord, if you just get me out of this, I promise I will serve you for the rest of my Who's prayed that prayer? I know I prayed that prayer several times when I was in the world, and I found myself in the trouble. I used to tell God, please, just get me out of this one. I swear, I promise. I will never, I will be the best Christian ever. I will just be, I will fast every other day. I will do this. I will. And the moment he gets you out of trouble, guess what? I'm good. <laughs> Back at it. That's right. So he sees Jesus, and he goes, oh, wow. There he is. This verse, let's go to verse 13. And he that was healed, was it not who it was? For Jesus had not conveyed himself. Let's go to 14. Afterward, Jesus finds him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made a whole, so sin no more, lest something worse comes upon you. See? When God saves you, 
from this nasty world, don't go back. Don't go back. See, what Jesus is telling this man and he's telling everybody to hear today is don't allow the second death to get you. God has saved you from the first death, the spiritual death. He saved your life. You're going to spend eternity with him. Don't allow something to mess you up where when you die, you find yourself outside of his will. So he's warning this man. And the Bible says that, verse 15, that the man departed and told the Jews. He wanted to get out from under the problem because they were not going to stop until they found out who it was. So he, the man departs and told the Jews that it was Jesus which made him whole. And this, I'm about to close, give me five minutes. And this was the turning point in the ministry of Jesus because he wanted the Pharisees to know who he was and who he said he was and that he was the Messiah and that he's going to heal no matter what day it is. The Bible says that from then on, because it was the Sabbath. He asked him, well, don't you know it's the Sabbath? He goes, yeah, my dad works on the Sabbath, and so do I. Someone say amen. God works on the Sabbath, and so does Jesus said, so do I. And verse 16 is the key to the rest of Jesus' ministry. Uh, he was going to be persecuted. Verse 16, and therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him or kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Think about that. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to pound the flesh. And what God meant for good, the enemy or these legalists turned it to evil. When God asks you a question, when he asks me a question, Pastor talked about it, Padilla talked about it earlier today. The promises of God are what? Yes and amen. So when God asks you a question, your response and my response should be yes and amen. You never go wrong with saying yes to Jesus. Never. Just say yes to Jesus. God bless you this morning. Amen. Lord, have a seat. What an awesome word. Amen. Just say yes. Yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's, that, that's all we have to say. We're going to have communion today, guys. Today's our communion day. And uh, we want to say thank you to the uh, Summers family who blessed the church with flowers. Amen. If you want to bless the church with flowers, you can see Kimberly. Kimberly, raise your hand. She'll get you the flowers right there, amen. We have a spot where we go, and uh, she gets a good deal there. So uh, just see her, and she'll get the flowers, and we'll put them up here, and uh, we'll pronounce your name. But uh, I know they don't want their name pronounced. I know that, that couple there. They're beautiful. But we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, disturb it, the elements for, uh, for communion there in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. This, this is a time of worship. This is a time that if you've missed it, if you have sinned, if you had a shortcoming in your life, which all of us do, we're forgiven. But just for your own psyche, for your own mental health, you're welcome. For your own mental health, it's a time to forgive, to forgive one another, to forgive each other. Because we all have shortcomings. Uh, it could be in your heart. It could be in your mind. You know, uh, sometimes we don't do it physically. 
but we'll do it emotionally. We'll do it in our hearts. You know, we'll wish something bad on somebody. And that's a sin. We're not to do that. We're, we're to bless people. We're Christians. Amen. We're to honor people and respect people. But this is a time that if there's anything in your heart and you know it's not pleasing unto the Lord, it's a time to confess it. Go ahead and stand to your feet, every one of you guys. Stand to your feet. And a lot of healing takes place, a lot of deliverance takes place in repentance. When you repent of your sin. You know, when you say that, God will, God will heal you. God will deliver you from what you need deliverance from or, or healing. So may I have one of those, please? Uh, if, you, if you need a, a... Thank you, sir. If you need that, just right now we're going to take a moment that you and your, and your thoughts and your confession, you know, underneath your breath, forgive me, Father, I sin. And I've sinned in front of you, and only in front of you have I done this sin. And I ask you to forgive me. Forgiveness will set you free. You think you're going to set the other people free, you're going to be set free from what you've been carrying. A lot of us carry some things that we shouldn't be carrying around any longer. And it weighs us down. So it's that time. So if you have anything in your heart, go ahead and ask the Lord to forgive you. The word of God says before Jesus gave himself up, because he gave himself up, no one took his life. He gave his life for our sins, for us. That he was in the upper room with his disciples and others. And he took a piece of bread, and he broke a piece off the loaf. And he handed, he handed it to his disciples, and he told his disciples, take this bread, for it represents my body. My body that will be given up for you. So when you take that, remember, anytime you take bread, anytime you break bread, remember what the Lord did for you. He did well by you. Partake of the Lord in remembrance of the Lord. A vessel of wine and he and he poured it into a cup. I'm gonna illustrate for you guys can see it. And he pours it in a cup and he tells the disciples, This wine represents my blood, the New Testament. That my blood that will be shed for you on Calvary. A man paid a price with his life and his blood for us, that we can live free and we can live whole. And he says, and every time you do this, every time you partake of this, do it in the remembrance of me. And when we do that, that I want you to know that the Lord is working on you and he's cleansing you through his blood. So when you take this, know that a newness is taking place in your life. You've been forgiven and now we can live our new lives. Partake in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that they did. They sang a hymn right after. And they blessed the Lord. In the participating of taking the elements, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, God supernaturally unites us all as brothers and sisters. 
And that's why we're, we're taught here in this church that you're my brother, you're my sister. That's why we call each other sister and brother, because we belong to the same heavenly father. And I want you to know that you've been forgiven. If you repented from your sins and you ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, and you begin to walk in the ways of the Lord, not going back to our old ways, as you heard today in the scriptures, go and sin no more. The Lord would heal us. And that's what took place today as you said under the word. If you receive the word and you begin to apply it to your life, you begin to believe it works. Your life will change. You can look around the church and many people's lives have changed. You're not the same person you were six days ago, six months ago, six years ago. You're different. And it's all because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So let's go out there and live our lives out loud for Jesus. Let's not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell people you're a Christian. Tell people you love Jesus. And live like a Christian out there. We're going to partake right now of, of uh, fellowship. God gave me this name, Turning Point Fellowship. And fellowship describes this church. We are a fellowship and we break bread with one another. We laugh with one another. We, we enjoy one another's company. If you don't think we're friendly, then you be friendly to us. Let's be friendly to one another. Amen. You know, uh, that, that's how we make friendships. When you go out of your way and say hi to somebody and introduce yourself. Our church, they know what to do. You're new here. You're a first-time visitor. You're going to get four or five people who are going to go up and say hi to you, your name and all that. I know sometimes it can be overwhelming, but that's the way we were raised here in this church. Amen. We're a church of love, church of joy. You know, all by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can do this. So as we go out there, uh, uh, let's enjoy one another's company. Don't be a stranger because we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. I'm no better than you and you're no better than me. We're just better than what we used to be in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's how it works. So if you say you're a friendly person, I'd like to see you behave friendly today. Bradley says, I'm friendly. <laughs> Father, we thank you and we bless you for this word. We thank you for this time, Lord God. We thank you for who you are, that you are the living word, the bread of life. We thank you for the impartation of your word that has taken place. That we say yes. We say yes to you, Lord Jesus. That our will not be done, but your will be done. Let it be done, Father, in heaven as it is here. Let it be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord God. We're looking for a blessing, but most of all, we're looking to bless you and bless others, Lord. So as we go out and eat, Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would bless the food, the provision, Lord God, as you provide it once again. Bless the hands that are preparing it right now, the men and the women, Lord, that set up the tables, the chairs, and the fine dining, Lord God, that you would bless them. You would encourage them that they would not grow weary in well-doing, Lord God, for in due season they will reap what they have sown, Lord. I ask this on their behalf. On the behalf of the teachers and the nursery workers, the media, the sound, the worship team, our ministry, Lord, I pray that they won't get tired of doing well, but that you would continue to encourage them and bless them Lift them up, Father, when they're tired. Let them know when they're weak, Father, you'll make them strong. They'll be strong in you. I thank you for every visitor today, Lord. I thank you that you've spoken to them. In your little simple way towards them, Father, they heard the gospel preached today. I pray that change has come. I pray that faith has been imparted. 
a trust and a confidence of knowing you step by step. And from glory to glory and from faith to faith, we bless you and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all his beautiful people said, amen. amen. May you be, go ahead and have a seat for me, please. Praise God. Thank you. Yes. May you have a seat.